In this video, we are going to do some sky replacement inside of Photoshop Elements 2021. Before we begin this, just a quick reminder that we now have a patron for this channel, so head on over there and sub for a little of that extra extra. Hi guys, this is Kevin for Pixavert.com. I've got here Photoshop Elements 2021. And what I want to do is to give this image here a bit of a sky replacement. So inside of Photoshop Elements, we're going to go to Guided and we're going to head over to Special Edits. And I'm going to choose Perfect Landscape. This will allow us to start doing our sky replacement. The first thing is that we've got the option to straighten the image. Now this image here doesn't need straightening, but if it did, I'll just draw a line across the horizon and it would straighten the image. I'm going to undo that as soon as it's finished and then we can continue with our sky replacement. So we've got a range of skies here and I'm going to choose, I'm going to choose this interesting one here called sunrise. It will generate a composite and matching color tone. And what I want to do is to just play around with the settings to see how it looks once it's actually completed. Now, as you can see, this image looks fine without a sky replacement, but it's always interesting to see what would happen if we tried a different sky. So there is our sunrise. What I'm going to do is to click uh, on the move tool and I'm going to move the sunrise around a little bit. Maybe just bringing it up here will make things look a little bit more lovely. Ooh, that looks fantastic. So what you might notice is that we're, we're having some problems over here where the building here is beginning to fade. So what I'm going to do is to fix that first. I'm going to bring in a blue area which really contrasts very strongly and then we'll zoom in and take a closer look at that. So what we can do here is to use the tools to fix the problem that we're seeing there. Um, I think the easiest thing to do is to go to refine edge and then choose subtract and then just resize the brush and then just remove the sky from areas where it basically shouldn't be. I'm going to hold down, I'm going to choose before only so that we can see what it looked like before the sky replacement. And we are losing a bit of fence here, but I'm not worried about that. It's mainly the building. So let me just make sure the building is good. And we can zoom in a bit further if we need to. Just going to make the brush a little bit harder and then we're going to choose add and we'll just add the sky over there and then choose subtract and subtract just like that. Now that's looking a bit more respectable so we can zoom out again and then we can move the sky once again. Now, if we go too far, we end up losing the sky, which we don't want. So we're just going to bring it down until it's below the horizon, just about there. There is an option called auto match color tone. Let's see what that does. Now, overall, I don't think it does a lot of good in this image. One thing you might notice is that the sun is kind of like in the wrong area. It's kind of like behind where it should be sort of more or less in front. I don't really care about that. I want an image that just looks amazing. And, you know, if this was like an album cover or I don't know if it, this was on a billboard, I don't think people will be trying to check to see where the sky was coming from. I think it's the impact that really matters. Now, there are situations where you want to try to get the sky to match. Uh, the source of light and so on. But in this one, I think it just looks fantastic. Let's do it before and after again. And we can also choose before and after to show at the same time. Now I'm really, really liking the after. So we're going to go to next. There is a spot healing brush, which allows you to fix some problems that you might see inside the image. I'm going to leave that and we go to next. Now we can now export. However, if I want to do a bit more editing, I'm going to choose in expert, continue editing in expert. What that allows us to do is to get 
um, involved with all the layers. So let me just show you what we've got here. We've got the final image and we've got the composite image here. So it's actually given us a mask which shows us how it's decided what was foreground, what was background. And we can play around with that a little bit more if we want to. What I'm going to do with this one is just to create, I don't know, I'm going to create a hue saturation and I'm just going to increase the saturation just a little bit. Maybe not total saturation that much. I'm going to choose the Let's see, let's see what happens if we go to the blues and just increase the saturation in the blues. Maybe just darken the blues a little bit. And let's just increase the spread. That's before, that's after. I'm going to accept that and we can see the before it's a very subtle edit but you could continue doing a few more edits if you want to in the expert area there are lots of tools here to finish off and like I say I think you can become a bit too obsessed with where the lights coming from and you know until you start taking pictures where the light is in the right place for sky replacement you're not going to have a perfect match uh, each and every time so I think uh, initially being a little bit experimental is a good idea um, hopefully this uh, new feature will be demonstrated in Photoshop proper fairly soon and we might see that as an update in the next few months in, inside of uh, mainstream Photoshop but for the time being we've got it we've got it inside of Photoshop elements and I think it's pretty fun to use I'm gonna leave it at that and I will see you guys in the next video bye